So the dog hears a noise in the middle of blah, 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 blah. And he responds to that noise by wagging his tail. And that's it. He doesn't have understanding. The scripture says in many verses, the animals do not understand. And that's a clue to what the doctrine of uh, the image of God is. Certainly they don't analyze. Thinking involves analysis. It's not simply understanding the words. You're, I'm speaking English right now. You're understanding the words. Um, you're analyzing what I'm thinking. You're, you're, well, what I'm saying, you're analyzing my words and saying, well, that's not right because such and such. Uh, you're trying to come up with answers why or reasons why. And notice the word reason keeps cropping up. Uh, reasons why what I'm saying is right or what I'm saying is wrong. You're analyzing these things. You're making connections. You're drawing inferences. You're making connections between one idea and another idea. And if you do this for any length of time, you're engaging in thinking. Most basically of all, thinking involves words. Words tag thoughts. Words tag thoughts. We use words to refer to ideas. We have an idea of a domestic animal with a long tail at one end and a meow at the other end. And we use the word cat to tag that thought. If we have a different idea uh, of an object in the front yard with a that's vertical, it's brown on the bottom and green on the top, we use the word tree to tag that thought. And thinking involves words. It's impossible for us to think without words. Words are expressions of thought. Words are expressions of thought. Animals don't know words. They don't understand. They don't analyze. They don't draw inferences. They don't subject what they hear to logical analysis because they are without logic, as the scripture says. They are without reason. If you read the Westminster Confession, the, uh, the uh, larger catechism, you will see that it refers to animals having souls, it is echoing scripture in that regard. But they do not have rational souls in the language of the catechism. Animals do not have rational souls. Men do. Animals do not. Man is not an animal. Quite a difference between them. Well, we've already talked about uh, some of the related words in the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, those are some numbers there I'll give you. I'll ask the question at this point, who thinks? Who thinks? Uh, persons think. Persons think. In fact, this is what makes a person. It is thinking that makes a person. Persons think. Uh, God thinks. Let's look at a few verses here. Let's look at... Um, if I can find my uh, correct list here. Look at Jeremiah 29.11, if you would turn there, please. Jeremiah 29.11 For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God not only thinks, he knows what he thinks. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Uh, man thinks. There are many verses that we might uh, uh, use for this. If you turn to Proverbs uh, 24. I'm sorry, Proverbs 23. 
starting at verse 6, Proverbs 23. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And you'll notice, and we'll get into this more later, that it is the heart that thinks. It is the heart that thinks. We have some commands in the New Testament. Turn, if you would, to uh, Matthew 3, chapter 9. We have a command uh, of John the Baptist <clears throat> to the Pharisees and the Sadducees not to think, not to think a certain thought. He says in verse 9, Do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Do not think to say for yourself, to say to yourself. Uh, turn to Matthew 9, if you would please. Uh, looking at verse 1, So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. See, they had made a judgment. Christ had said something, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And they concluded this man blasphemes. Now you can construct the argument, the unstated argument that they used to arrive at this conclusion. It involves the premise that Jesus Christ is only a man. He's a mere man. It involves a premise denying his deity. Because only God can forgive sin. This man is a mere man, therefore this man blasphemes. And notice Jesus' response but Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Jesus knows their thoughts. He knows their conclusion. He knows the argument by which they arrived at that conclusion. And I should say at this point, the argument is logically valid. The conclusion is false because one of the premises is false. The premise is, this is a mere man, not God. Only God can forgive sins, so this man blasphemes. Uh, it's a good argument, it's a valid argument. False conclusion because there's a false premise. And we'll get into this more when we talk about logic. But notice what Jesus, they're talking to themselves. Thinking is frequently described in scripture as saying to themselves. They said within themselves, this man blasphemes and Jesus knowing their thoughts. He's the second person of the Trinity. He's omniscient. He knows all things, including their and your thoughts. He says, why do you think evil in your hearts? Why do you think evil in your hearts? Among other things we ought to learn there is not simply that it's the heart that thinks, but it's possible to think evil thoughts. Uh, there are many philosophers today and many people who are not philosophers that deny that it's possible to have an evil thought. Evil can only be some outward action in their minds. Not true. It's very clear from Scripture that there is such a thing as evil thoughts. And Christ here refers to them. Why do you think evil thoughts? Well, let's go on and look at some other verses. Um, <clears throat> in Matthew... Uh, 17, if you'll turn to Matthew 17, and beginning at uh, 24, verse 24, when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? He's asking a question that requires Simon to think. What do you think? Who is required to pay taxes? 
The sons are strangers. And Simon has to give it some thought and answers. Um, many other questions like that in Scripture. I won't give you all the citations. Um, John 5, let's turn to a slightly different one. 